Our patient is a 2014 Chevy Malibu with a 2.5 liter in it. The complaint is the check engine light's on and they said it just doesn't feel as zippy or have the pep that it once had. So let's pull codes and see what this light's all about. So I like to just run a full health report that'll talk to all the modules capable of communicating on this vehicle. But while that's doing that, just to verify or, or confirm the concern, there's the check engine light. So we got two modules uh, talking to us, the engine control module, the intake rocker arm solenoid valve to control circuit, and the intake rocker arm solenoid valve to stuck off. So that's definitely our check engine light. This multi-axis acceleration sensor module I'm not sure what that is. It's a U-code, so it's a communication. So we're not really concerned about that. Let's focus on our um, variable valve timing code. So your intake rocker arm uh, solenoid is right here on the top. This is the intake side, uh, and it looks like this kind of uh, cling-on vessel. So we want to move this um, intake chamber here, get it out of the way so we can get access to the uh, connectors. So on this thing, uh, on the back, there's a couple of uh, connectors that hold some hoses on. Um, this little intake boot on this side needs to come off. It's an 8 millimeter. Um, and then there was a 10 millimeter. And then right here is just a spot that it locks into. Um, see right here, that just locks into that little grommet place there. And then this connector, let me move you around so you can see it. And then this connector here is attached to this, um, and it just has a little, it's actually similar to this connector, so it just has this uh, little piece here that you pull over, and then it unlocks it. So that right there unlocks it. I had to use a flat screwdriver to do it, my fingers couldn't, couldn't muscle it. Um, but that's how you get that connector off. So now we have access to the back of this uh, connector here. So the only service information I can find as far as testing this is to do an ohm reading. So we'll have it unplugged and we'll ohm between pin 1 and 2 and we should get uh, between 10 and 30 ohms uh, on 1 and 2 and then we'll do uh, pin 2 and 3 and again it should be between uh, 10 and 30 ohms and if anything is outside of that either between the pin 1 and 2 or the pin 2 and 3 then the intake uh, rocker arm solenoid needs to be replaced. Right, so we are hooked up, so I'm going to be testing uh, pins 1 and 2 first. It's going through its auto range. So we are at 13.3 ohms. That puts us within our uh, specification. So now, let's do between pin 2 and 3. And there we are 57.2 ohms. So that's outside of our range by 27 ohms. So just by doing that, simple test with the ohms, according to the service information I have, this control valve, this intake rocker arm solenoid, that needs to be replaced. So I was kind of just poking around my scan tool just to see if there's any kind of actuation test. I did find something, so going to actuation, um, intake rocker arm uh, solenoid, that's what we were looking at, and it looks like I can control the solenoid valves. Now this is interesting. Uh, it wants the engine running, so I can't just listen for uh, the solenoid to actuate, but I actually need the engine to run. Now I can command it, uh, high lift, low lift, and, and you can see it right there. High lift is the commanded state. Uh, low lift is the commanded state. Now, when I go out under the hood, I don't hear anything. I don't hear the solenoids clicking, so I'm suspecting one of these. If I toggle between high and low, I should hear something. I would think, but I'm in the car now. When I was looking at it before, I was underneath the vehicle and I couldn't hear anything, or underneath the hood, I mean, I couldn't hear anything. So, at least I can tell the computer to command it, uh, intake rocker arm, solenoid valve one. So right now I'm commanding, I believe this is solenoid two, to be low lift, and you can see it, commander solenoid two is indeed low lift, commanded. So you say it's commanded, computer says, yep, it's commanded. Um, and I just, changed it to high lift so now it's all high lift I don't know what information this is useful for um, 
So even though this is already diagnosed, I'm just curious to see if there's any other way to test this thing. Is there a way to test the control side uh, of the circuit? Uh, so what I did was just took this off just enough so I can lift it up. I didn't have to take it all the way off and I just front probe the connector uh, to it. So if it's just a solenoid, um, the reason why there's three wires from what I can understand is because there's two solenoids. So there's probably a common ground or a common power and then maybe the computer grounds one or grounds the other. Now that's a possibility. And then to get the oil valve or that solenoid uh, to partially actuate it, I imagine it would be uh, pulse width or duty cycle of some kind. Now that's just theoretical because uh, I don't have any service information for operation of this thing. But uh, it, it kind of makes sense. So you have a common between the two and then two different controls depending on which solenoid it wants to actuate. So with that uh, scan tool, remember I had that command high, command low. Possibly I can command it and get a light bulb uh, to light up. Well, let's see. So I have a test light and it looks like, let's see, uh, this one here is my middle. So it'll light up with a red light. See that? So that's my common power. And so it's the control side is negative or ground side switch. So I'm just doing this one in red so I know that that's, okay, that's my common power. So that's gonna hook up uh, to my test light, just a little tail on my test light. So now, let me test another one. So I have very, dim light you probably can't even see it. it's so dim on that one and the same very dim on this other one so let me try to actuate it and see if i get any kind of light change so this is valve one and i don't know which one is valve one and which one is valve two you can take a guess and say the one on the left is valve one so i'm going to command it high i don't know if you can see the test light so nothing changed low Ah, so it won't. It won't let me because there's a DTC present with this system now. Why? Because it's an open circuit. So this kind of testing will not work uh, with your bi-directional toolage. That's a shame. All right, so this will be like a inner mission for this video um, because I cannot get this part anywhere in town. So it's an order part. Uh, it'll be here in a few days. So when you see me next, you'll be talking to my future self. But we will get that uh, control valve ordered. We will get it here uh, replaced. And then you can uh, see the ohm difference. And really, as far as drivability, um, that won't translate through the camera. But there should definitely be a, an increase in power. Because when this system detects a fault, it just shuts it down. It says, oh, we got a fault. So let's just not even use it. It puts it in it puts it in its uh, little pre-programmed state and leaves it there. So when it is fixed, then that, that oomph, that pet pizzazz will be there uh, once again. But anyway, I will flash to my future self. See you then. This is my future self. We got the part. Let's get this car fixed. So once you get the airbox back off again, uh, it's really just a matter of uh, three 10 millimeter bolts, one there, one there. Uh, and then one right there on the other side and this whole thing should just separate So removing this is helpful and it's just those style of clips Little tabs that you pull and then this whole little Piece comes out and that gives you room for this this bolt here and just makes it easier So very little oil uh, did come out on mine, but not very much so that could easily get wiped up you just want to match up your new one with the old one. Just make sure all the ports look the same, uh, the bolt holes line up, uh, form factor looks good. Now we're ready to slap it on. Now it came with new bolts, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the bolts that it came with. I'm not sure why it came with new bolts, but it came with them for a reason, so I'm going to use those. All right, so our new one is in. Tighten down. We can go ahead and put the hoses back on, plug it back in. Unfortunately, you can't really run it. So this car will not stay running for very long without the airbox plugged into it. So unfortunately we can't do like a uh, really thorough oil leak test, but it did run for a little bit, died, started up, ran for a little bit, died. So you can at least just go around the seals and make sure. 
So now we can put our air box back on. Well, there you go. We replaced the intake oil control valve. Not too difficult on this vehicle. Um, and really not much you can do after it's replaced. There's no other checks to make sure the harness side back to the computer, the control side is working. Um, really just ohming that solenoid. That's it. So we'll put in the new one. Uh, I test drove it uh, for a while. Check engine light's still off, no pending codes. Um, so I would say this is a fix. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. See you on the next one.